we believe in reputation over revenue. Because if you do all the right things that make me feel good about owning a business and our employees and serving the contractors and doing a good job for them, if you do those things and genuinely care about them, the money follows. Well, your winning attitude is very similar to that because what you're trying to do is go win with your team and bring your team with you. Hey, what's up to the point listeners? It's your boy. <laughs> it's your boy, Christiano, the host of To The Point Home Services Podcast. How you doing? We're live again. This is getting fun. This is getting fun. I have my good buddy, Mr. Jason Bueller, in the studio today. We also have Mr. Rob Millick in the studio. Hey, Rob, welcome to Arizona. Hey, you like this heat, buddy? I love it. Thank Ooh. you for having me. A little different from Florida? A little different. Oh, well. A little drier, a little hotter. That's a, it's, it's a dry heat. Remember I told you that? It's a dry, hot it is, it, it is like we we went to dinner last night and uh, remember we walked out of the restaurant and it was still like 108 or something like that i think they cooked the steaks on that concrete outside they did but it, it had nothing to do with the uh, old fashions that could have raised the body temperature a little bit but, I mean, it was a moderation it was a moderation yeah we are excited listen i love whenever i get to have my friends in here too and every once in a while I get to I get the luxury and the and of sharing their stories and their journey and uh, and Jason has been a, a customer of Rhinos for uh, three ish years or somewhere around there, mm -hmm. but I've been uh, we you know we started becoming friends and hanging out like and he listened but this was the first time I got I'd ever been to an NFL game arriving by boat is when you have us down to Jacksonville that was a good time. It's always cooler with Bueller. It's always cooler with Bueller. And I made sure everybody in the stadium knew that. Did I not? <laughs> you did your best. But you know what? That's actually um, the first time that you had ever talked to me about, about service carnies. You ever heard of those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I may have coined it. <laughs> Check that box. If nobody knows what that is, we'll find out later. It's a little special, a little special <laughs> thing we come up with. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm excited to have you in the studio and, and just to share the story because all of the listeners for sure can relate to this. Um, you know, you, you've had this uh, incredible journey over the past, say three, you know, four years from 3 million up to 18 million. And you've kind of been through it. You, you ended up uh, partnering with Rob and with Legacy uh, and that's been great post transaction. But I want to talk about all the shit that happened even before that, because it wasn't like smooth sea, man. Right? You ever yeah. heard it was smooth sea never made a skilled sailor? That's true. Yeah, uh, I I did not come up with that, but I say it often. Kind of like rising tide raises all ships. I have like all these sea references. Maybe I should be a seaman. I'm not touching. <laughs> it. Don't get into a joke battle with Chris on the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but anyhow, I, uh, your story is like really, really good. And I think it's very, very relatable too. But like you and I were talking to just about overall demand leads and things like that. And I've had this conversation multiple times, especially over the last few months. Uh, you, you did a lot of things that you can control internally that helped you in that growth plan and, um, and went through a lot of like hard decisions and wrong decisions. And, but, but we're also willing to own it and take a step back, learn from it, and then move forward positively. So your story is probably one that is the most relatable with the majority of our listeners. And so um, I'm proud to have you in here. I'm proud to call you my friend. And I'm proud of the success that, that you've had and that you two guys have had together. And Rob, we'll kind of get to um, like your journey and your stuff with, uh, a little bit later. But I want to talk to to Jason real quick, just about you were on the podcast before back in September of 21, I think it was. We were at Joe Crisara's event in Las Vegas. Um and we shared a little bit of, of your journey to that point, but, but you shared a little bit of, of, uh, your business before that on that particular episode. So I don't want to just assume everybody heard that episode. So maybe what we can do real quick and don't go like, you know, too deep, but you kind of go high level, but, um, prior to, you know, you and I at Trigret in 2021, maybe share with the listeners just a little bit about, um, about what your business was. Cause it wasn't even named Bueller. No, to, to, to back up to the beginning, um, Right out of high school, 1998, went into the air conditioning business. With, Damn, 1998. 1998. Gosh. Uh, with some friends. Um, did that for three years. Had a chance to move to Florida. Uh, moved there in 2001. Started with a company there. Uh, kind of worked my way up, installer, service tech salesperson. Um, did a really good job on the sales side. Ended up getting a job with Train as a territory manager. Went there 2005 uh, through 2010. Launched Air Source America. I was 30 Ooh. years old. Did you come out with that name on your own? 
Yeah, myself and some family members, uh, we wanted to be a big sounding company in town. Uh, we, we just wanted to come out of the gate. I, at that time, I didn't want to be last name heat and air. It sounded like everybody was doing that. Um, clearly, I wasn't a great marketer <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so I started the business in 2010 and, you know, really grew it s- slowly over the course of eight years from 2010 to 2018. We got up to a little over two million in sales and we were good at air conditioning. We were good at the customer service model. We were really good at generating reviews, installing equipment, servicing equipment, selling maintenance agreements. We just didn't get enough at bats. And we ended up partnering with Kick Charge Creative and they rebranded us to Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay Cooler with Bueller was born. And that was in, uh, we launched that February, 2019. In 2019, we did about $5 million of, uh, I'm sorry, $3 million of revenue in 2019. Um, in 2020 is when um, we ended up getting to $5 million in revenue. And it, it was the end of uh, 2020 that we ended up going to, I'm sorry, it was 2021 that we ended up getting to uh, the Joe Corsara event. That's where I met you. That's where I got on stage. That's where we did the three big decisions. The three I was big scared decisions. To That's right. Yeah. Well, and I think you, if you even take a step back, how how you and I actually met was um, you had Bueller, the brand created, and you were pulling um, Bueller's Day off, uh, which was the boat. And I was like, dude, you have one of the absolute best brands I've ever seen. Now, being a Ferris Bueller fan, this was a very easy one for me to be appealing to, but it was like the best brand. How you didn't think to use that, your last name <laughs> in the beginning, and you came up with Airsource America, I'm not discrediting it, but this was significantly better. Game changer. So of those like absolute th- game changer. Of those three big decisions, what were the three big decisions? Like, so you have your, you got your rebrand done, which is a big deal if you ever went through it. Um, but it was probably in hindsight, like, how about you wish you would have done it sooner? Absolutely. So what were the three big decisions? Well, the, the rebrand was the, was the big one that we Number did. One, got, it. got through that. Then we decided we wanted to partner with a new digital marketing company. I had listened to the podcast and decided that Rhino was going to be that company. We obviously uh, went with you guys, had tremendous success we went to the event in 2021 and we're like, we need great sales training and business training. So while we were there, we had a chance to kind of network with some different people. Everybody said, you know, go with Joe Cressara. So it was October of 2021. We got back, hired Joe Cressara, implemented that sales training and just kind of doubled down on the business at that point. So what did you, had you learned at some point, like with the rebrand, with the addition of, of digital marketing that actually was working well for you and increasing leads like that, you noticed, started noticing some holes in the business that maybe you couldn't fix or somebody else was better equipped to fix. And that's why you were kind of going after Joe just because Joe's got great credibility and he could, or at least some of his processes that you could take and then implement yourself. And like, is that what you're trying to do is just fix some of the holes in the boat? That's exactly right we'd become much more marketable between kick charge rhino, you know, doing some radio stuff. Then we, we thought, well, we got all these leads coming in. We've got to get better at converting them. We got to get better with increasing our average ticket, uh, making sure our close rates where it needs to be. Uh, We wanted to make sure that we were winning in the, in the marketplace. And we knew that we needed to hire the best people to be able to do that. Yeah. So did, so did you like have certain people running certain parts of the training that were, and that you just, came into a regular cadence of, Hey, we're going to do this training every week. Is there like something that you still do today that you kind of took away from that, whether it be a cadence or a specific train or anything like that? Yeah. So we went through the training and then on a weekly basis, we have meetings with our techs and our installers as well as salespeople to kind of recap where we're at in the process and what we need to do to keep getting better on a weekly and monthly basis. So you, that's why I like is that anytime you and I have conversations, we start talking about just some of the new things at, you know, at Bueller or just even the culture and need, and I've gotten to know some of your employees too. And I love just seeing kind of the cool things that you guys do. I mean, I know you were able to do something really cool for, I think it was your office manager. Was that what her name Yeah, Shelly. Yeah. That was really cool. Like thing that you, that you're able to do for her, just always kind of giving back, which is pretty cool. I, as I've come to know you, like that is a lot, you have a big heart. But I love that you continue to chip away internally. So you just not like said, hey, you know, I'm going to be over leveraged by one uh, lead source. I'm not going to be over leveraged by one person. Like I have all these systems and processes I implemented. And and probably one of the bigger decisions too is when it comes time for you to say, hey, you know what? 
maybe it's time for me to partner and bring on some extra intellectual capital to help me think through the business to continue to scale this thing because I want to do what's best for my employees, which ultimately is best for your customers. So what's cool about that is, is that you came out to uh, Rhino X in 20, in February of 2022. And you, and, and what I love is like the conversations that you and I have had like post post in, because you actually took a ton of notes while you're there. You took some good things away and you went back and you impl- implemented some of that stuff. But for Rhino X 2022 seems like forever ago. Now you've now been to, to well, I guess you've been to all, the last few. Well, last two. How many have I had? Four, three? You've had three. Forget. I've had three. Thank you. Um, the last two. I'm here for you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, but this last time around, you know, was kind of extra special. Um, but but maybe before we get to to that, it's what did you take away from that, uh, from that Rhino X? It's back to your business. Because this is one thing I, I knew, you've heard me preach this a million times. I talk about this whole 95-5 rule on how 95% of the people will go to these things and listen and then go back and do nothing with it or, or half-ass it or try and it fails or whatever, but they don't stick with it. And that's what makes the 5% that go back and stick with it so successful. You fell into that 5% bucket. So maybe just share with the listeners you know, what you took away and the things that you implemented. Not, I'm not talking about bragging about Rhino X. I mean, Rhino X is fantastic, but he actually took the things that matter the most from that and went back and implemented those. And what were those things? So when I went to Rhino X, I really knew that I had to take some things away from it. I had to be able to evolve as a leader. I had to evolve to get better at growing my business. Um, every day that we grew, it was like a, a place I had not been before. So I went out and I had a chance to really network One of the things that I can remember is that I I got a lot of confidence. Um, It was like a once in a lifetime opportunity uh, where I was able to meet uh, and hang out with like some of the legends of the industry and some of the young lions, as I like to call them as well. (laughs) And I really had a sense that after getting to know these guys that like I belonged in that room with them. And there, and there was a sense of confidence I came back with that was really special. Even though you weren't the same size as some of them, you belonged in that room. I felt like that I belonged was, in that room. I was going where these guys were going. That's great. And I, you don't get that until you go and experience it. You know, it's, it's, it was really special. Uh, the, one of the things I learned uh, from all of them is that you have to be proactive as a leader. And when premier talent comes available, you have to be able to hire it. Like you can't. You can't try and sit back and wait, oh, do I have this spot or, you know, is this going to fit for me right now? If there's premier talent, you got to get it. Yeah. And I had an opportunity. Totally um, there was a guy that came available as an operations manager. I had come back uh, from Rhino beaming with confidence <laughs> and Chase Hudson became available and I was able to recruit Chase to my business. And it was like an absolute signature hire. I mean, the guy is an amazing operator. He's He's everything excellent at being an operator that I was not. That's great. He's an implementer. Um, the next thing I would say is I learned to not be afraid to ask more of your distributors and partners because <laughs> these guys definitely know how to, they know how to leverage their, their partners to, to try and get a little bit more. And I was able to do that. I met with my distributors and, and just had the big ask and also made a big commitment and said, hey, if you can do these things, here's what we can do in return. We want to grow our business year after year. And, and they were able to do that for us. When, when you'd have those negotiations with like distributors, cause that's not, you, you have to go in with a solid game plan where you, did you take with you like a growth plan or anything like that? Or did you just kind of go in with this? Well, you had the confidence, but you're like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. Cause they probably hear these things before. And that's how you're using to negotiate. What did you, did you go in with like a game plan? When there? I sat down, I was all charged up. I was like, listen, I've been, and I've seen the best of the best. And I know that that's where we're going to go. And I can tell you exactly how I'm going to get there. And here's what that could mean for you. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to grow my purchases, not just this year, but, but for years after. And here's where I think that we can get to this year. And here's what my ask is if we can get there. And I think that my confidence and my energy and my riz, as the kids say. The riz? My riz. Wait, as the kid? Through. Wait, what the hell does riz mean? Is that your like? That's charisma. Where you, where you oh, been? Oh, God, bro. <laughs> come on. I'm gonna, I've never heard the riz in my life. Sorry to mean to you, but now I'm going to use riz. it. I had the Riz. So I came back and when I, when I went and had these meetings, they came away charged up like, yeah, man, I believe this guy. He's really going to go places. So I was able to get a little bit more in return from the distributors. And, you know, that was something that was really big. Another thing was that at that first uh, conference that we went to, you had Mike Tyson there. 
That's right. And Mike Tyson, what was his signature line, Chris? It, it was your battle cry. I remember that. It was what was it? Consistency kicks determination's ass. And it's true. It's so so true. It's so true. So I had come back. Um, I'd had a back injury the year before, and I was just not myself. I wasn't in in, in the right shape. I wasn't in the right headspace <laughs> physically. Yeah. And physically, you got to get there. So I went to the gym. And I started trying to get some results. And I was like, I went back and said, Mike Tyson says this isn't going to work unless, <laughs> unless you do this shit out of it. You know what I mean? So I went to the gym six days a week. I walked five miles every Sunday. I dialed in my diet. I pretty much stopped drinking for like six months to get real results. And I got into the best shape of my life. And when I look back, that was a really great time in my life. And I, can, I consistently just said, I'm going to make consistency kick determinations ass. So that was like a really big takeaway. That was awesome. And, and I remember watching that whole like transformation. I think um, you remember simultaneously Goodrich was kind of doing his whole transformation type. It was cool because there was like a bunch of different people doing it. I'm very, very late to the party on that one. But where were we at this morning? We were at the gym. We were at the gym. This guy is busting it in the gym. I'm so <laughs> proud of him. Thanks, dude. But what that does too is, is, uh, it does make a difference with the way that you think, you know, and the way that you feel and the way that, and the things that you do when you just feel better. Cause I spent the last like year and a half eating on, like on the road, nonstop doing nothing, like nothing, nothing. And so I, now that I'm like, you know, say six or six or so weeks in, I feel great. Like today I feel really good. Like I, my arms are a little heavy driving back to the house today. But I feel really, really good right now. But it does change your cycle, you know, like your psyche a little bit too. Like you can kind of go into it with a little bit more energy and a little bit more jacked. And I saw that happen with you. It's too bad that uh, you're you're not going to be in town tomorrow because if Rob went to the gym, he'd make us both look like sissies. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> this know. guy's in amazing shape. <laughs> I took him to the gym with me one time, and I was like embarrassed at my effort level. <laughs> Well then, note to self: don't go to the gym. <laughs> hey, I'm still in the in the baby steps phase, so like I need to need to keep I need to stay put right there. The Pro benefit. Progress over perfection. Yeah, it's the benefit of having a, a wife who's in the fitness business. Perfect. Well, and you Can't travel, you it. travel a ton too, so you probably have to find like a good regiment to get into. Yeah, I just stopped eating. Well, I work out every. I try and work out every morning when I'm on the road, but I, I cut out gluten when I travel. Um, not because I'm gluten intolerant, because it eliminates pasta, sandwiches, muffins, bagels, all the stuff that I was eating and just feeling lethargic after. So it's sort of like a self-imposed discipline. It's, uh, it's been very helpful for me too. All right, man. Get, everybody's getting in shape. Take notes. Yeah, yeah no shit. I this guy's in shape. I ate a bagel this morning. <laughs> How do you feel? I felt, I felt okay. <laughs> felt a little wonky walking in the gym. So so I want to keep going down this this path a little bit too. And uh, if, Chase, if Chase is watching, shout out to Chase. Um, but you at some point you hit this you know i mean well let's let's face it everybody that's listening and anybody that's watching knows that we had some really really great years in uh 2020 late 2020 2021 2022 great for our industry for for many reasons great for our industry a lot of companies were, inc were incredibly successful and then obviously there was a lot of um a lot of uh, private equity um stuff happening lots um, and it got really, really popular in the home services space. Um, and it would be hard, especially when you're listening to podcasts, you're kind of in any of these social environments to not see it in your face constantly at that point in time. For me, I went through it a lot, like, cause I had so many of our Rhino customers that were acquired and, uh, being involved in it. And I've seen it all. I've heard the good, I've heard the bad. <clears throat> um, I've given my opinion based on like, you know, if I know you and I know, the potential private equity partner, I can typically tell if like, if from a relational perspective, it might make sense knowing if I know the, you know, the two well enough, <clears throat> but you end up making a decision that you thought, you know what, you're going to go down that path too, because the window was wide open, but how much longer was that window open? We don't know, but you were encouraged enough, I think to, uh, to dip your toe in the water that then turned into jumping full on into the deep end. <laughs> like, so I want to just, I want the listeners to hear this because your journey isn't like this, this, uh, sunshine and roses journey going finding a private equity partner, because, um, you do have to find the right fit and, and what, and the, what the right fit might be. If it's, if you're looking to like, as uh, Bueller will say, is you grab a bag of money, throw it over your shoulder and you like bounce like the Grinch, you know, with the bag full of all the, all the, all the presents, <clears throat> 
you can do that. You were we the, the, you could have done that. Nobody's stopping you. Nobody's stopping you. Um, if it was like a gross play, like you know, with what we did, it was a gross play for us. Cool for you too. But man, you gotta want to do it with the people you want to do it with. And but it's easy to get wrapped up when people are throwing big numbers at you. And that was happening so much in that little in that time frame. So so what I'd like you to share with the listeners is like though though you ended up partnering, you know, with with legacy with Rob, that wasn't where it started. No. So, so maybe let them know where it started. Cause I bet you, some of you listening have been through this exact same thing. So to, to give a little credit to what we actually did in the year 2022, we brought chase on, we sat down, made a plan, hired four additional technicians, four additional installers, wrote a budget on how we were going to grow the business. We walked it back from on a monthly basis. How many, how many calls do we need? What is our conversion rate going to be? What is our average ticket going to be, both in, in sales and in service? And then we were able to really implement that plan. Um, we were also able to, to get with Megan, with Rhino, and say, hey, we, we need to increase our budget, um, our PPC budget and things like that, to be able to hit, these, to hit these numbers. So we went through April, May, June, July, and we had this record month after record month after record month. And we got to a point where we're like, you know, I, I spoke about it with Chase, and I was like, hey, you know, this, this window, I don't know how long the window is open. I don't know if it's open forever, but it almost feels foolish to not, you know, see what's out there. And um, I'm the type of person that I, I didn't want it to be just a win for just myself. I wanted my team to be able to benefit from it. So I had had conversations with uh, SF&P for a couple of years, like just keeping the, the dialogue open. Sure. And we got to the end of the summer, and our numbers were just incredible. And you know, they put together uh, some stuff to kind of like go out there and, and, and see what the interest level was. And the interest level was crazy. Like there was just a lot of interest. We were a young, hungry business and there were operators in place that didn't want to leave. So that's, you know, pretty attractive, you know, to the people that are out there. And at that point, I would say that I probably rushed it a little bit. Um, they came back, they said, hey, we've got, we've got interest. Um, they set up a couple of meetings. I actually had a chance to speak with, with Rob at that time and a couple of others and things just, they went a little too fast. And I can, I, I hate to say that I got greedy, but I, I got to a point where all these numbers were coming across the table and I was like, Oh my gosh, I, I just need to do something. I was like a deer in headlights and, and we went ahead and, and, and pretty much accepted an agreement that we were going to move forward with. And once, you know, there was an initial, there was initial like euphoria <laughs> of like, Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. And, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? You know, <laughs> but it started to fade. And what happened was I started thinking, I'm not the guy that wants to just a hundred percent do something and, and just move on down the road and, and just, and just take a small salary and like, and just be a, a, a little piece of the puzzle. I didn't want a big group to come in and say, Hey, this is really nice what you've done, but get out of the way. We know what we're doing. And we're going to do this way better than Which you. Which happens. And it kind of, that's kind of what it was feeling like. So once we got through September and October, we continued to drive the EBITDA much higher than what we had, you know, kind of negotiated on. And I started to feel really bad. Like I started to get really strong feelings of, of, of regret. And, fe- and I, I, frankly, I kept going back to Chase. I was like, you know, we should have really looked, we should have talked a little bit more with Rob. That was so much different of a structure and now that I'm into the thick of this, I realized that the, the, the last few extra dollars and cents wasn't what, what was going to make me happy. What was going to make me happy was, you know, um, having this great legacy that we can continue to build on. I realized once I was in the agreement, I realized I wasn't addicted to money. Yep. I was addicted to winning. And winning for us was winning um, with, with great culture. Winning was having the best employees, having the nicest trucks, having the best pay plans for our guys. Striking fear into the competition <laughs> was winning for us. That's what we liked most. And that's, that's what was driving me. I know it's what was driving Chase and, and my sales team. And frankly, I, I, I had some difficult conversations with SF&P. I said, I don't know that this is going to be right for me. And at that time, I was probably misdirecting a little bit of I was putting a little bit too much on those guys. I was saying, Hey, I was counting on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were supposed to make sure I wasn't unhappy and, and I wasn't taking accountability for the fact that I was the one that, that had made that decision. And I was increasingly 
kind of becoming miserable, even though I, I this was supposed to be the happiest times of my life. <laughs> and my wife was over it. You know, she was like, I just want my husband back. Like, if this isn't going to work, then, then, then get out of it. So, um, yeah, I, I made the call. I, I, I called Fred and I just said, Hey, this isn't going to work. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but this, this just isn't going to work. So, so we decided to kind of just take a step back and punt. And at that time, I know that there were a few people around me that are like, this guy's a lunatic. What is he doing? Turning down this opportunity. But my instincts were right. My instincts were telling me this wasn't the one for me. And in the back of my mind, I knew that if I ever went down that road again, I cared much, much more about being happy and keeping my little winning machine (laughs) (laughs) than I did about the extra dollars and cents at the end. And that's kind of where it ended at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a very big boy move to make because to take a step back after pumping all that time, money, energy, all the things into it and potential reputation um, and to, and to taking a step back. I've heard this story actually multiple times, not, not your story. I'm saying similar stories from others that have done the same thing. Well, basically you just got an at bat. Uh, you just had one at bat and now you get to, you kind of know what it looks like a little bit what the pitcher is going to throw to you. And you came back at it with far more knowledge and better understanding of not only the process, but what you actually want. And you mentioned kind of being happy. And by the way, like, listen, nothing to be ashamed of for making money. Like we are in business for profit, you know, how you make your money, I think is uh, important. How you mean for you, for each individual, like what's important to you, like to me, how you make your money is important, more important than how much money you make. Um, Which is why we will say, and you've heard me say this, we believe in reputation over revenue because if you do all the right things that make me feel good about owning a business and our employees and serving the contractors and doing a good job for them, if you do those things and genuinely care about them, the money follows. Well, your winning attitude is very similar to that because what you're trying to do is go win with your team and bring your team with you. And so you took a step back and did the right thing. Now what's, what's interesting about the story is one, you, you admit it. I got sucked into the, the money piece of it. And it's easy to do because people are throwing monster numbers at this point in time. So I commend you for taking that step back and then coming back at it again, because that's actually more of the person that you are is is that guy. So then you, so what do you do? Do you sit, do you keep chipping away at this? Like, do you, did you, when did you go back to market? Like when did all that go down when you decide, okay, now I'm ready to step back into it. So that all kind of reached a boiling point in November in early November. And I can remember early November of 2022, 2022. Gotcha. And I can remember uh, going back home for Thanksgiving and feeling like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. I I felt so much better. I knew that I'd made the right decision, although I really didn't know what was going to happen, you know, moving forward. But I was, I was very confident in my team. Um, I was confident in the plan that we had. I was confident in the partners, you know, that I had in place. And we said, let's just finish this year out and let's let's talk about this next year. So we finished November and December uh, really strong. And we came into January. January, you know, started off really well. And I, I can remember thinking, you know, that it's inevitable that at some point the market's going to change a little bit. You know, we've had these, these really, really great years. Um, and I didn't want to feel like I was going to put it off forever until I didn't make a good decision. And I, I had calmed down quite a bit. So I, I called Fred back. I you know, I just called him back and manned up and said, "Hey, Fred, <laughs> I know I was uh, I know I was a little worked up before." And I give credit to those guys because you know they they put a lot of they put a lot of effort into something, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got this emotional guy that's like, "Screw this, I'm out." <laughs> and I called him back and said, "No, listen, I, I really want to." They were no longer cooler with Bueller. <laughs> <laughs> they were sweating it with Jason. <laughs> sweating with Jason. <laughs> So I called him back and, and Fred was, he was fantastic. He said, no, listen, we can look at that. Um, but, you know, based off what happened last time, we need to be a hundred percent sure. Like we can't, um, you know, we can't, we can't rush this. You, you, you gotta be sure. And at that point I let him know, I said, Hey, I've got a lot of interest in the legacy model. And, you know, Fred's job is to make sure that there's more than one option on the table. And he said, that's fine. We'll, you know, we'll see what all's out there. And if that's what you want to end up doing, that's what we'll do. And, you know, we, we basically knew we had a few months that we were trying to like really hit out of the park to, to just kind of peak our value. We knew we were going to grow through this year, but we weren't, we weren't so focused on, Oh, let's, let's try and squeeze one more year out of it. That's not what we wanted. We knew that, um, partnering was also going to give us some added benefits that we weren't going to get on our own. 
equipment advantages, insurance advantages, being able to recruit talent, things like that. And we, we really wanted to capitalize on, on, on joining at the right time. So I got back with Fred. Um, he started to talk to a few people again. I ended up meeting Rob, had a really, really great meeting with him. And there was a lot of interest, but you know, Chase and I, we both agreed that we wanted to be a part of something where we still had stock in ourselves. You know, the idea of, of just, you know, taking the sack of money and throwing it over the shoulder <laughs> and prancing out of there like the Grinch, that wasn't our style. And we wanted to feel like we were in a true partnership. And we really looked at that model uh, with Legacy. And, that, and, and Legacy is a different model. They come in and, and they want to help you build and grow, uh, but they want to partner with you and allow you to still have some autonomy in your business where you can still implement the plan that you had before and keep the culture that you had before and not come in and wreck things like obviously some groups do. I'm not saying they all do that, but some right. groups do that. So we went back, um, uh, Fred and, and the SF and P team handled everything for, you know, getting all that together. And this time was just a total different experience. Instead of having all those feelings of regret and all that paranoia and feeling like, Oh, am I making the right move? Am I even making the right move? We knew it was the right move. And I was so confident. And I came into the, I came into the partnership instead of feeling like what's in it for me. I, I came in like, man, I want to perform for these guys. Like I, I want, I want to reward their confidence and, and, and us and in our team. Prove them right. I want to prove them right. So we came into it and we, we, we basically had to uh, run it through, you know, the end of the first quarter. And then we, and then we closed shortly thereafter. And, you know, we, we've got to run, you know, April, May, June, July, up until now and we've performed really well and we're, you know, we're tracking to go from 13 million to somewhere between 17 and 18 million. And I know that that's not been the norm uh, for a lot of companies around the United States. Uh, but, but we feel really good that we're, we're re rewarding legacy yep. uh, for the confidence that they had in us. And I guess what I'm saying in retrospect is if you're a young lion, if you know that you're going to keep growing and you know that you want to win at the highest level, this is the, the, the type of option that, that's available. You don't always just have to say, oh, my chips are all done. I'm done at the table here. I'm going right. to throw the kickstand out and you know, pick my kids up from school every day, and hopefully I find some other passion in my life. <laughs> that, that wasn't for us. And I, I, I'd studied it enough to know that a lot of guys said that, and I'd seen that a lot of guys had had, had regrets, and, and we don't have any regrets. As a matter of fact, we are charged up about the future and – what being a part of something that's bigger than than just Bueller, being a part of, of of legacy and seeing how we can help them move forward and help other contractors move forward. And you know, frankly, like I am so happy that I followed my instincts. I really am. I, I want to brag on you for just a second and then I'm gonna um, I wanna transition to to Rob real quick. But thanks for sharing that. Like it's such a cool story of you just kind of owning your shit. Like you maybe got difficult to deal with because you were like people are like, what the hell is he doing? We already bed down this path. So commend you for doing those things, but it's, it's a, arguably the largest transaction of your life. Like maybe you have others, but like it's the biggest transaction of your life up to that point. It's a very important decision and all the people that it impacts. So stepping back, I think where, what I hear you saying is going into it a uh, second time around, you had absolute clarity on why, why you're even doing it. And then because you had absolute clarity and you had met with some of the potential you know, partnerships you understood that that Rob and Legacy were kind of in that young lion deal. Like it's a bunch of guys who kind of want the same things, but will still kind of let you do your, you know, run your business and be more of a support role. And you could keep going down that path of winning, but with extra support. That's kind of the path you went down, but it was crystal clear to you at that point. Yeah. So you knew it. I just want to brag on you real quick because I pulled up these numbers that I'll be sharing at, uh, that I shared at Pantheon by the, by the time this thing rolls out. But when you're in that January to April spot, like, so for those listeners, you know, like if you don't know, Jason's in Jacksonville, Florida. I can't remember if we said that or not. Um, but I pulled your uh, brand new customers that we brought in for you, that Rhino brought in for you. Uh, 265 repair leads, 166 straight up new install leads, 110 uh, maintenance customers, and 17 duckless leads. That was just from January to April. Net new business. You booked those at 54%. That's solid, dude. So pretty good. You, you got a nice little clip running there too. So then I pulled that out. And this is all this year, by the way. I mean, we were talking about demand being down. So you don't just, doesn't mean you give up on it. It just means you got to start doing more to go get what's out there. Like if you don't, somebody else is going to get it because it's not like it's gone. May to July, 
post-transaction, post-partnership, HVAC repair leads, 786, May to July. Installs, 194. Uh, HVAC maintenance, 162. Duckless, 24. Still booking at a 51%. That's solid, dude. Like you, not only did we still, did you still double down and go after demand leads like that? By the way, these are just mine. This is, this doesn't even count repeat referral. None of those things, self gen, whatever. So, but you still executed, you did the blocking and tackling all the things to keep growing and scaling the business. So that way, not only did you just grow her to 17, 18 million, but you're bringing the bottom line with you and you're proving them right. Right. So, so then I want to segue to, to you, Rob, and just say like, First time I met I met you, I think you were at the airport, and I might have been in the airport, and we are having a, a meeting, and and I have um, I have a few of your brands that are customers of ours too that have been with us for a little bit too, but you and I had not met yet. We knew of each other, but we hadn't met yet, and I was just kind of curious to know, like, because I've seen all these different private equity companies coming out of the woodworks, you know, and I've known I've known of some, but there's more than that I'd never heard of at that point. Legacy being one of them, and then I'm always intrigued on like, well. Why did they want to get in this space? I mean, if the answer is like, oh, because it was very appealing after COVID to know like this is the essential business. There's a lot of room in it. Is it because they're blue collar businesses and you like that? Is it, you know, is it whatever? I'm always just curious to know the motive behind it. So legacy um, was, cre- you, and you and you and Jake have uh, created legacy. And how long ago was that? Um, we have a third partner, Frank, too. And Frank, right? okay. To, can't, can't forget Frank, uh, March of 2021. Got it. So why did you decide to get in this space in the first place? Like what was so sexy to you about heat, heating and air conditioning and the plumbing? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like personally, I have a very traditional path. Um, I don't, by the way, I don't consider legacy private equity. It's still uh, like odd to me to hear legacy as private equity because, you know, I don't view ourselves as, or myself as an investor. I, I view myself as an operator building my own business, dealing with a lot of the same challenges and everyday struggles that you know Jason's dealing with that our other partners are dealing with but coming out of college thought I was going to play professional soccer pretty quickly realized you know I wasn't good enough um, <laughs> pretty, t- t- took about like you know two weeks um, some self-awareness so you know pivoted um, you're no messy no no <laughs> although he is taking over my hand <laughs> could have been me so pivoted um, you know worked in you know a number of different jobs in finance ended up Um, in California at Activision Blizzard, where I was working on Call of Duty, um, a game I think a lot of people in this industry may have played once or twice or heard of. Kyler Murray's very, very familiar with it out here. It's pretty much all he does. He doesn't play football (laughs) anymore, just plays Call of Duty. Yeah, so Call of Duty, I was working at Call of Duty. um, You know, it sort of worked my way up to the CEO office and then into the game team. And, you know, I'd been offered this big promotion and was really you know, sort of, it was like the culmination of all the hard work of the, the prior 12 years of my life. And sort of a, like, it's interesting hearing Jason's story about it just not feeling totally right. Like I, I it was like everything I thought I wanted, but I, I didn't quite like, there's something about it just felt off and like very, I guess, timely, you know, I'd been sort of mulling over whether or not to sign the contract and accept the promotion. Um, I got a call from Jake, uh, who I'd gone to college with. And Jake said, hey, have you ever thought about starting a business? And I said, you know, I've, I've thought about it. Um, I don't really think I have any ideas that are worthy of, you know, a, a business, but, you know, I've always thought about it. And he said, why don't you join me and Frank and, and do an HVAC business? We've got a commercial business. You know, we want to launch a residential HVAC business. Like, why don't you come? We're going to be in L.A. in two weeks. Uh, why don't you come with us and meet, meet this business? Um, it was a business that we ended up not partnering with. Um, so I remember I went from the, the studio in Woodland Hills where we had just done a private showing for Travis Scott of one of the games to this HVAC business in, you know, the Valley in LA. And I was like, okay, I guess this is, like, this is way cooler. Yeah. And but it, it, it just felt, it felt right. Like, you know, not being, you know, it was obviously a little different, um, but it was just seeing these guys and how hard they had worked and how proud they were of their business and seeing what we could do for them and how we could support them and help. Obviously this one didn't work out, but even then you could, it was apparent like these are great people. Um, it's an amazing industry. And frankly, like we can actually make a difference. Um, whereas in call of duty, I was just, you know, a cog in a wheel in a machine. I've left the business is still doing great. Like I'm sure no one even remembers that I worked there at this <laughs> point. And so really wanted to like create and define my own legacy and professional life. 
and doing something bigger or, or trying and putting myself out there and sort of like risking it all and like being willing to fail. And so, you know, legacy wasn't my idea. It was Jake and Frank's idea. Um, I've since, you know, adopted it and, and, and taken the baton from them. And, you know, frankly, I think we're really proud of what we've built. Um, proud of, you know, hearing Jason's story and saying how, how much he resonated with the model that we have really sort of like, to me, it's the coolest part. Like, it's just, that's what, why we do it so that Jason can go back to his team and he's still the owner of his business. The culture he's created is enhanced, not destroyed. Um, you know, his trajectory hopefully is getting better, not worse. Like that's, you know, it's really awesome to hear. So I think, yeah, long-winded way of saying it was an accident, but a very, a very lucky accident. for me. That's good. So you're enjoying the change. And, and it, it, I mean, listen, like um, I'm biased because I come from the middle of nowhere, farming community, blue collars, kind of like the way I've grew up, way I was raised. Um, and it's the life I've created, you know, and we, this is what we're around. And I have some of, some of my really great friends came from this industry, like people I actually want to hang out with, um, even Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I think that's how you and me met the first place, right? I think it was, or how we finally connected was, I think maybe JB put that together for us at some point in time. Like maybe you had said, hey, connect with Rob. I forget what it was, but, but um, I was surprised on how young you were. Yeah. You know, I'm being in this business. We, uh, yeah, well, when we met Jason too, and just to, to go back to Jason's story just for a second, we, we met it, we met Jason and Chase, and I actually think your brother showed up at the bar like an hour later after <laughs> we finished dinner, but, and we had this big like tab that SF and P had to, they had a minimum they had to hit. So I think we gave your, your brother ended up getting, you know, some wine or some, something, some, some, <laughs> some wine to take home. Um, but we left the meeting and it was Jake and I were at the meeting and we were like, this is a perfect partner for us. I mean everything Jason's saying is what our model's about. And just, you know, maybe give a very brief overview. Our model, we don't buy 100%. We buy, you know, anywhere from 60 to 80%. And the former owner, who's still an owner, maintains the, the minority interest at, at their own business. So Jason's still an owner of Bueller. He's not an owner of Legacy. And obviously he benefits from Legacy doing well, but, you know, it's still eat what you kill, yep. you know, He's not impacted by the other, you know, 25 brands in our business directly. If he grows, it's more, more money. I don't want to be crass, but more money for Jason. Sure. And we met and when we talked to him, we thought this, this is this guy and Chase, they're perfect for us. Uh, and then when they said like they weren't interested, uh, Jake, my partner, who's a very big personality for anyone who's met him, thought that Jason hated him. <laughs> and, and so he, he, he said, you know, I can't believe they, I can't believe like they don't even want to have a follow up. Like. He must have hated me. And, and so on the follow-up meeting in sometime in January, I guess, or February, uh, Jake strategically didn't join and said, Rob, <laughs> you take this one. I think Jason hates me, <laughs> which is not true. <laughs> um, but it was just a very funny, like, you know, we thought it was a great fit from the beginning and you know, we admire Jason and his business. So, you know, what they've created is exceptional. The culture is amazing. And we just feel very lucky to be to be partnered with people like Jason and to be able to build a business with, with frankly, with people we like, um, which is awesome. Yeah, and and you guys have some, you know, I mean, you guys have some pretty solid people in the, you know, in the family, the people that I've known that are like really good leaders and and kind of as I as I think through how how you guys both are, I see some of those things in some of the others. Like everybody's still kind of a little bit younger and grind. I'm so, by the way, I'm 44, so I'm I'm young. Okay. Yeah. But very young. St still kind of have that like battle. Like I want to go to battle. I mean, I go to battle every single day at this business, but um, I enjoy that part of it. So you kind of have that like mindedness too. And there's quite a few brands within the uh, legacy service partners that have that same mentality. So I'm mean, like, and, and they're great businesses too. So it's cool to kind of see it actually come together because you have to keep in mind. Um, and you both, you guys know this, but I've had, I mean, we're well over, 50 total uh, acquisitions done of our customers over the past, you know, five years, 50. That's a lot of people. Some stay uh, based on whoever the private equity partnership is and some leave and those ones I want to avoid. But point being is I've seen it all like on both sides with friends and, and, or horror stories and hear like all the things. Thankfully I hear more good than bad, thankfully. Um, but this is one of those, this is one of those good stories. 
And it wasn't like it was just a one-off good story. There's been multiple good stories. And that tells me all I need to know about post-transaction, post-partnerships. Is it what they said it would be and things like that. So I hear it. I hear it all. I know way more about so many things that I shouldn't know. I, I should probably be in fear for like my safety at some point. <laughs> I'm a vault, just so you know, I'm a vault, even after a few old fashions. But I'm proud that you guys are able to do this thing together. And it's fun because, you know, Jason and I are friends and I love hearing like we'll, we'll connect with one another, especially if he's out, you know, and he's always rocking his no zero day shirts. Like this dude lives no zero days. And that's sure. where we're much alike. You know, but you, but you've, you guys have done something really good here. And even though you lucked into, I use air quotes, into this HVAC world, maybe it was meant for you all along. Like this is a spot where you, you feel like you you belong and you can do something great with it. Um, and you're really just kind of getting started yeah. with this whole thing. It's not like it's a decade old, you know, business. So, I mean, what's like, what's, what's the plan for legacy? Like you're going to keep going with this thing. Obviously you hear all like in the market too, like, is the window closing? Is it? It's, I don't know that the window really ever closes. Does it maybe look different? Potentially. I don't know. What's your business look like? What do you want? If it's about just the money, maybe it's not what you think. I have no idea. You probably know more than me. Just like, what is your plan with legacy? Like, you just want to keep this thing going and keep growing it. And just like, is that the plan? Yeah. I mean, we're, we, you know, our youth, our youth can be an advantage and a disadvantage. Um, The disadvantage of the youth is that like, you know, we're two and a half years in. I still don't know. There's so much I don't know about the business. I haven't seen, you know, all of the cycles that even like Jason's been through being, you know, eight years older than me. Um, he's seen more ups and downs. Um, <laughs> Are you that much yeah. older than Rob? I am. Yeah. Shit, that means I'm Ten years eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, whatever Damn it is. It. But, we, you know, I think we, we don't know. We don't have all the answers. Um, we look a lot of times to our partners for the answers. And that was a big mistake I made coming in. I thought like, oh, coming in you know, worked at this really sophisticated tech forward company. I've got all these ideas. I can help, you know, professionalize this, that, and the other. And you, you sort of realize pretty quickly, like the businesses that we've partnered with are all such, I would say like commercially successful and savvy companies. And they do so many amazing things. All the answers were actually inside the platform and we didn't have to bring in really any of our outside advice. So I'm still learning basically all the previous experience I've had is just, you know, not that it's irrelevant, but it's help. It's it helps because we don't have any preconceived notion about this industry, and we're we're kind of coming at it as outsiders, letting people continue to do what they do. But you know, the other the benefit of the youth is that you know I'm 35. Um, I don't feel like I've had a career defining you know win, which I think a lot of our partners have had a win. You know, Jason partnered with us and and sold a substantial part of his business and had a great outcome. I would call, I would call that a win. That's a W. I, I, I it was a win. win. That's a W. Um, I don't feel like I've had a win, so I want to like that motivates me every day. I'm not here to retire. I'm not here to give up, and I'm not like sailing off into the sunset. Like we're grinding and trying to grow this thing and build it every day. And I think you know we've got a long long runway ahead of us. So we're you know I think we're just getting started. Um, two and a half years in. Good. Well, you've got good leaders in there too. Like I mean, I mean even with. Jason, he's just such like, one, he's just a likable dude too, but like he knows how to get it done and he's proven it too, you know, even, you know, pre and post and that's a big deal. So the story is, this is when we were talking about this. I was like, dude, just tell the raw story. Like, let's talk about the raw story because it's a good one. It's relatable. When it got hard and you made a bad decision, you owned it, you moved on, but you still kept chipping away at the business. You still growing, you still kept caring about your people. You were doing the trainings. You still had your like your three big decisions that kind of got you all the way up to that phase. Well, those three big decisions are still, the same things that you, I mean, like those are core, you know, core things in your business still to this day. I think, thankfully I'm still a part of that. (laughs) Um, But you're just, you know, now you also have this group of people too, that are also like-minded, you know, within the legacy brands that you can kind of collaborate with. And that seems like it's a lot of like, you're saying the answers are already in, you know, already in the business. Well, that's, that's what the answer is. So you guys can kind of take it and make it something great, like really, really great. Um, but I want to go back to real quick too. And just to, as we're closing out, we're probably like what roughly an hour or so into this thing. We can get getting close is, um, and this is something that I hope that I'm sure you've, you've, you've thought about this, but when you, you know, you're 40 going to be 44, you know, and you've had some, a decent chunk of, you know, of success too. And, and you're still like, let's keep going, baby. Let's keep, I'm all in. Let's keep rolling. I love that. But you're doing it from a different lens. 
So what would you have went back though and done and done differently? Like, is there, and I'm not talking just from going through the whole potential M and a thing, but like, I'm talking like from the beginning back when you're an OH. I O. I hate that stupid saying, but what would you have <laughs> went back? Like, what would you go back and do differently, man? Is if there's anything like people have asked me that question, what would I, what I, what would I have went back and done differently? And you can give the cliche answer of like nothing. I wouldn't go back. I would, I would for sure go back and do some things differently that I, you know, like that would have progressed me through things faster. And there's probably a debate for, well, would you have learned X, Y, Z if you didn't? Well, maybe not, but there's for sure some things I would went back and done differently for you. Like, what is it? Like, what would you have went back and done differently? I knew shortly after I launched air source America that I should have used Bueller air conditioning. I let fear get in the way. I was, I was fearful that, people would think I went out of business or that it was going to look like I made some big mistake and my instincts were telling me to do it. And I just, I just didn't, I didn't move forward with it. But I will say in, in the same regard, it was a blessing because I wouldn't have hired kick charge. If I would have, you know, two, three years in, I wouldn't have had the money. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to do it that way. But in hindsight, if we would have become more marketable earlier, we would have grown a lot faster we were always good at air conditioning. We just weren't good at marketing. I had to own that at some point in my career. I had to own that. And then I had to go and find the people that were really good at it. I learned from that though. And after that, I, I became bold in my decision-making, you know, that I was going to go after the best when I made a decision. Rhino is an example of that. Even right now, we've had success this year, but I am like hungry to keep going. And Brian Enders is a, amazing partner with legacy that is like the young lion that probably convinced me (laughs) that legacy was the spot. And I've, I've had some great conversations with him and he was like, listen, Jason, you need to, you need to hire the the wizard of ads. You know, if you want to take this thing to the next level, you got to hire the best. And we did, we we've hired them and we're, (laughs) we're going to charge forward and, you know, we're going to stay bold in those decision decisions that, that are going to grow the business and the only regret I have is that I could have done it a little quicker. Hey, what did you hear frequently at Rhino X from a lot of the legends on the panels? If they knew that they would have bet harder on themselves earlier in their career. Right. Everyone says the same thing, but hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and what's cool about this too is, is uh, Jason and I were talking, I can't remember if it was this morning when we were having coffee um, around, he's still chipping away at it. He's asking me about, booking rates like <laughs> maybe could i maybe could i use you know liz to come and help with us our but just always kind of chipping away at it it's the number one place that money can be won and lost is when the phone rings you know you take somebody that's got a 60 percent booking rate and take them down to a 25 percent booking rate it's a completely different company oh, yeah. so if we can go from a 51 or 55 percent to 60 or 65 percent i mean that's less marketing dollars you have to spend to get that much more business so when I tell you I'm I'm hungrier than I've ever been to grow this business, I mean it. Yeah, I I have I mean I've, I know you, so I have no doubt, and I'm excited to be along for the ride with you guys too. You know, and I'm grateful, and I'm grateful that you've allowed me to you know to continue to work with some of the the partners and the brands, and I know that you're going to allow me to continue to do those things. So I appreciate you appreciate that now, <laughs> <laughs> you and everybody. Um, but th- this is again, I think, a really cool moment for for you guys to just keep taking this thing and seeing where you, where you can go with it. I get it so like. I'm excited by the same things. And so for those that know too, many, I brought on a private equity partner and it was a growth play for me and I needed somebody who could support my growth. I just realized that I ran out of uh, intellectual capital to continue to scale this thing and, and not give up either customer service or employee satisfaction. I needed help. It got to be a big, co- you know, big company. And I didn't want to give up either one of those. So sometimes when you wave the white flag, it's not necessarily a negative. It's actually a, a very, very much a positive thing. And it's, that's why these things exist. That's why these partnerships exist. So you can just keep going. So if you still have that drive, you've got options. If you feel like, I don't know what else to do. And I've tried coaches and this and that you've got options. So you just have to make sure you explore those things, but you guys are uh you know, it's fun to, to sit and have conversations with both you guys. Obviously, you know, Jason, you and I have become, you know, good buddies. So we've kind of shared a lot of our journey together. We kind of went through it at the same time, you know, yeah. a little bit. So we had that, but it's all the listeners. Like my, my hope is, or my, what I'm, I hope you're encouraged by is one, 
uh, if you're considering it, yes, the window is open still. Um, be crystal clear on what you want from this thing, you know? So in, it, in if it's just about the money, you'll find an answer. Might not be the answer that you want if it's just about the money. Um, and to each their own, by the way, if that's your, your exit, good for you. If you really care about taking and scaling the business, making sure that you, that you, you have, that you fit, you fit relationally with the private equity partnership is incredibly important. And if you do, and you keep focusing on the business, that money will follow it. So kind of like what you're doing, right? You're still chipping away at things. You found the right partnership, somebody who can support you and the business is still scaling and still making money and still growing and doing all the things you wanted to do. Right? So, but you have options. And if any, and if nothing else, you're scared to go down the path. I mean, shit, Jason went down and then backed out like, and that's okay. And it worked out to your advantage, but you have so many people you can connect with, you know, to ask the questions to, to walk through the process and shit, even Rob, man, if you asked Rob questions, he would share them with you, whether you decided you were going to partner with them or even have a conversation with them or not. That's the cool thing about this group. You know, and there's some others that are the same way that like, well, that are just totally cool and open with sharing whatever, but I would encourage you, you know, to just keep chipping away at the business. You know, um, Jason, I shared some of Jason's, you know, results for this year because demand has been down, you know, but we're still taking advantage of it. So what you do internally right now still matters. And by the way, you're never going to go into some potential private equity partnership with, uh, if you keep chipping away at your business, you'll still give yourself plenty of opportunity with any, you know, private equity partnerships. Like, and if you don't know what things to be paying attention to ask plenty of opportunity to ask the people Jason's is available for anybody. So I don't know. Do you guys have any like parting words you want to share with anybody who's, who's listening? We're at the tail end of it right now. This is your moment. I, I do. This I, is I your a, moment. I have, a parting, I have a parting thing. So I said that the most important thing to me was that I was happy with my life uh, after I made a decision and that I wasn't going to let a few extra dollars and cents in the beginning be the differentiator. And that's something that I learned. But in the long term, I believe that the most successful outcome was going to be with legacy. And the reason being is that there was an upfront um, event where we were able to do really well on the, on the front side. We still are able to participate in the profits of the business for the percentage that, that we still own. So we're still able to you know, earn money in that way. And then at the end, if there is an end, if there is another event, there's another uh, event that can take place. And when you put all those things together, it's significantly more value than one upfront payment. So this was a way for me to have my cake and eat it too, mm -hmm. to get to keep my winning machine <laughs> and to probably win at the highest level. And I'm very grateful for, uh, for Rob and for Jake and for Frank. Don't forget Frank. Um, <laughs> and for Frank. I met Frank and he was awesome. <laughs> so, you know, I, I want to thank, just say thank you to two, two groups. One is all of our partners. Um, you mentioned it's been a tough year. Um, we've got some people who have performed at a super high level through the difficult, you know, Q1 and Q2. And I think we're going to end up in a pretty good spot. And it's all the hard work and focus and relentless, you know, drive that's led to that. So, you know, I appreciate all of our, all of our partners. Um, I also want to say thank you to you, Chris. Um, I don't think I've told you this, but when I was first learning about the industry, I'd go on these like 10 mile walks around my neighborhood, just circling the neighborhood, listening on one and a half speed to all of your podcasts. <laughs> and oh yeah. So all of, I want to say thank you to you and to all of your guests, because, you know, I've learned so much just listening and, you know, now luckily having had a chance to follow up with some of the guests you've had, um, you know, personal calls or emails. I've learned so much from all the other people in the industry and people have been so willing to share their stories and share, you know, the challenges. Um, I, I, we would not be where we are today without, without that. Um, and I, I'm saying this genuinely, like I've literally learned the industry from listening to your podcast, That's awesome. which is pretty, pretty awesome. So no, you know, man, thank you. Yeah. I, pr I appreciate that. You remember what I was told you about me taking compliments? I'm yeah. like, it's so, I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you. For, I didn't realize that. That's, that's, yeah. that's very cool. I appreciate that. Well, that's the point of it, right? Is to, to continue to educate the listeners on the things and I bringing guests on to do those things. So appreciate you saying that to me. That means a lot. And to the listeners again, hopefully you feel the same because that's the entire reason we put all this time and effort and focus into making this thing, you know, 
um, a staple in the home services space to help contractors just like yourself. I mean, there's all types that listen to this podcast from HVAC, plumbing, electrical, pest control, roofing, garage doors, you name it, GMs, PEs, you name it. It's like, but it's all kind of in this whole little blue collar world that I love so much. So, so I do this because I care so much about the industry. And by the way, like whenever I went into our um, private equity partnership, it was under the understanding I could continue, continue to do these things. Like this is important to me to continue to give back to the, to the blue collar industry that I love. So to all our listeners, thank you for listening. Uh, don't be afraid to leave a review for us. We really like those things, <laughs> but also if you wanted to leave a review, you know, and, that, and say any, you know, it's always cool. And I can share these comments with, you know, the guests that are on here as well. So feel free to do those things. It's not very difficult to go, you know, take an extra one minute and leave a review and a prompt. Maybe I'll read it on the air. <laughs> I will read it. If you leave it, I promise you, I will read it live on the air. Uh, oh, hey, we got a little shout out. Hey, what's up, Adam Johnson? Um, Adam Johnson's here in uh, Arizona. What's up, buddy? Um, we just, I'm getting used to this whole live thing, right? I got to make sure I'm paying attention to the screen more. But uh, to you guys, appreciate you guys making the time and flying all the way in here for this. How cool is that? I know that you guys are going to go see another one of your brands here, also around a customer um, over on the east side. So, um, to our listeners, man, just appreciate you guys so much. Rob and Jason, appreciate you guys making your way in here. And, uh, you know, they gave you a lot of information, a lot of things that they did, a lot of things that Jason has done to chip away his business, both from a marketing perspective, but also internally looking at, looking at the things that he's done, whether it be, you know, finding premier help, working, making sure he rolls out with the absolute, the highest, most absolute confidence, you know, to lead his business to victory. Um, whether it's working, negotiating with your vendor partnerships, whatever it is, you don't got to do everything, but, but you got to do something. No zero days. 